But let's talk about Chase Young for a second. I think he, it's an interesting topic. He is someone who, you know, the Washington Commanders did not pick up his fifth-year option. So let's go through and talk about what he does well, what he maybe doesn't do well, and why he didn't get that fifth-year option in general. So first, I think to talk about Chase Young, there's two separate points of you know, things we have to talk about. There is the how good has he been these past couple of years when he's stayed healthy, and also the how good was he really as a rookie. Some people are saying, was he maybe overhyped as a rookie? I, I think a little bit, but not that much. I think he was still a very good rookie, and had, I mean, I would say a great rookie season. This play, for example, it's a tight end who's going to be flashing over and blocking him. That's the way this play is going to work. Uh, this is a, you know, a running play. Uh, it's going to be a handoff to, to the offense's right, which is towards the left side of the screen. But just watch what Young does here. Watch how right when this play begins, you see that right here at this moment, there's you know a, a tight end who's relatively in position to block Young. But watch how Young avoids this. Watch him use that explosive footwork to get around, and he is going to be able to make an immediate tackle. These were the kind of things I thought Chase Young did really consistently his first year in the NFL. Uh, again, I do think that he maybe got a little bit overhyped in the sense of some people were saying he's going to be like a Hall of Fame edge rusher already. It wasn't that it wasn't fair to put that much pressure on him, but what he did as a rookie was legitimately great, and I don't think that can be taken away from him. Like, this play is going to be another example, this time in the pass rush game, because again, he was someone who certainly did it all. He was not just a pass rusher, he was not just a run stuffer, he did both. And here's an example, where he's going to be going up one-on-one -on -one against a left tackle, number 75 for Carolina right there. Watch how right when this play begins, you see how he gets both his hands kind of on that, you know, uh, inside, uh, sort of, you know, left hand kind of on the, uh, you know, the jersey area of the offensive lineman, but his right arm uh, is, you know, kind of on the shoulder pad area. That's where he's grabbed on, and what he's going to do here is a rip move, and this is something that I feel like Young was really good at in college and in his first year, and even has shown flashes these past couple of years, is the, the hands. Very much been a good technician and someone who can win using his hands, and that's what you're going to see him do here. Watch his left arm. You can't see it now, but watch uh, what he's going to do. Watch him get it under the uh, you know left arm of the offensive lineman he was going up against. Ends up knocking the football out and falling on it again. A little bit of luck being able to fall on it if you don't know exactly how the ball is going to where it's going to go. But it's still certainly an element of skill being able to see where the ball is and all that stuff. So I would say that's a very good play from Chase Young. So that's the the first question answered in my opinion. Of you know I went back and watched him tape and I said no he was legitimately really good as a rookie. If you want to say he was a tad overhyped, I probably agree. But he was still he had a great rookie year for sure and was legitimately a really good edge rusher already as a rookie. So. What's happened? Well, for one thing, injuries. I mean, he's only he only played a couple of games last year and only had about 400 snaps the year before. So that's a big part of it is it's been just staying on the football field. Can't really, you know, control that too much. Just kind of unlucky. But when he has been on the field, like let's look at some tape from last year. Like let's go over to this play. And I'm going to show this play because it might remind you of a play that I just showed you. This is going to be a very similar basically the exact same situation to the first play of this video, where you have a tight end who's going to flash over to block Chase Young in the running game. Okay, exact same thing. Well, can he be able to succeed this time? Well, as you see, the answer is going to be, I would still consider this a yes. He does get around Kittle there. Now, Kittle was in better initial positioning, so it wasn't going to end up being as dominant of a play as the last one does. But again, he still used his footwork to get around Kittle, kind of faked where he was going. And if the run went in that direction, he would have been able to make the play. So for me, yes, he still is able to do a lot of the stuff he was able to do. Like this plays another, I think, just interesting example where what's going to happen on this play is that's where he is on the field. Again, he's an edge rusher, and I haven't shown any of the blocking concept or anything, but here's how it works. It's going to be a block, it's going to be a run to the offense's right, so towards the bottom of the screen, and Young is unblocked on this play, which might seem like a bold choice, but it's actually what you pretty typically do on these types of plays. You can't block everybody, so a lot of times the guy you leave unblocked will be the edge rusher who's going, who's on the opposite side of where you're running the football. And watch, just really watch his motor and watch how he's able to eventually run down the, uh, you know, the running back. And, you know, again, has the explosiveness and the, the motor to be able to get there and make the play. So, yes, I did still think that we saw some of these flashes of Young. And again, with edge rushers, one important thing to note is it's usually less about highlights. People pay attention to the highlights. People focus on those splash plays, uh, you know. 
and those are obviously more impactful in an average game, but there's just an element of luck to when you can get those. The real star edge rushers aren't the ones who get splash plays consistently because no one gets splash plays consistently. They're the ones who are able to consistently just make good plays, consistently, you know, high batting average type of guys and can still make the splash play when the opportunity presents itself. And to me, Young has still done that. Going over here, even in the pass rush game, uh, you know, I still see him being able to do things like that, where what's going to happen is he's going up against, you know, uh, this, you know, relatively good offensive lineman. You might have heard of him, uh, Tr just Trent Williams, debatably the best player in football, uh, you know, that guy. So, okay, if you go up against Trent Williams 70 times in a game and beat him once, you had a good game. Like, that's just, that's the guy you're going up against, right? Future first ballot Hall of Famer, run the card in. I don't think that's how to do it for Hall of Fame, but if it was, that's how it would work. Look at how when this play begins, you're going to see Chase Young. First, he gets his left arm kind of on the right shoulder pad of Williams. Again, the hand placement is always very good, and watch what he's able to do with it. He's able to shove Williams just enough inside to get his right arm out of position. Eventually, the, uh, guard came over and, you know, debatably, I, I think you could argue that was a hold there. Maybe he was just sandwiched in between them. It's uh, I couldn't get a great angle from here. The ref had a good angle. I'll take his word for it that it wasn't, and he just got sandwiched in between. But without the guard help, that would have been a pressure. I mean, it ended up being a touchdown because, let's be honest, Brock Purdy throws touchdowns on every pass, it seems like. But, you know, it was a very good play from Chase Young. So that's why I find this situation so interesting. Now, keep in mind, for uh, players in today's NFL, uh, your fifth-year option is tied in to how well you perform. Chase Young has made a Pro Bowl. Uh, you know, if you make two Pro Bowls, it's higher. If you make one Pro Bowl, it's a little bit uh, higher than the average one, but uh, lower than if you made two, obviously. And then how much uh, you know play time you've played also factors in. And then there's just you know the guys who don't make that criteria. So uh, where Chase Young is, which is a guy who has made a Pro Bowl, his fifth-year option would be 17.4 million. So, well, yes, it's a fifth-year option. It's maybe not as cheap as some people might uh, make it out to be. You know, for example, had he uh, not done that, then he, you know, his fifth-year option would have been uh, just 12 million. So, there's an extra 5 million due to that Pro Bowl added on there. So, again, getting an extra year of, you know, him at 17 million, uh, you know, the reality is, if they ended up franchise tagging him, it's not that much higher. It's only a few million higher. The issue, of course, is you only get one franchise tag, and so that means you can't use it on someone else if you want to. So it does give you a, a little bit less flexibility that way, but it also does make you wonder uh, a little bit with Chase Young, uh, is there real concerns about some of these injuries that have started to rack up, and maybe they don't want to be on the hook for paying him $17 million, and it's more worth the risk for them to, if he does play well, then okay, great, we'll just pay him, because you still have the leverage of the franchise tag, you still, you know, he'll want to sign a deal with you, instead of having to play a year on the franchise tag, uh, but if it doesn't work out that way, then okay, no big deal, you can just, uh, you know, you can let him walk if he ends up, you know, uh, if he can't get over the injuries, there's, uh, you know, or maybe you can sign him to a deal that's less than 19 million, you know, if he was on the open market right now, is he getting a one year $19 million deal? Maybe, I really don't know. So that's just where things get very interesting. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Chase Young. I think he's been very good one on the field. His issue is a health issue, in my opinion, he can't stay healthy. And if he could have one good year, where he can get like, you know, 800 plus snaps next year, I think he's going to get probably a hundred million dollars. That's where I think he's at. But if he doesn't do it, then he's going to get a lot less than that. So yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.